Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture that we have on ant algorithms, specifically on ant clustering. This is also the last lecture for this module. So uh, let's get started. Now some ant species organize as corpses and larvae in clusters. In other words, piles of bodies or, or larvae. Now each ant seems to behave individually. So they pick up and they drop corpses. So they first move around randomly and if it's not carrying anything, it may pick something up. And if it's near other similar items, it may drop the item if it's carrying something. So let's see if we can um, model this or define this a bit more precisely. Okay, so let's start with a basic ant colony clustering model. Now let's assume one item type for now. It can easily be expanded to multiple item types, but let's just start with one item type. And we scattered this in a 2D search space. Just keep in mind that the items themselves could be multidimensional. So it could, for example, be, let's say, different fonts of different letters. It could be um, client information, anything, any type of thing that we like to cluster. Now, the ants move randomly, one cell at a time. And at, when it starts off, it's unladen. When it locates an item, there's a probability that it will pick it up. And this is defined as follows. So the probability to pick something up is defined as um, gamma 1 divided by gamma 1 Plus, plus lambda. Now this gamma 1 is some constant value. Uh, the higher this value is, the higher the probability of picking up an item regardless. And of course, the lower it is, the more this lambda comes into play. And lambda, of course, is the number of items of, of that specific type that the ant has seen uh, for a number of, of time, st uh, um, time, step, time steps. So that's the fraction. So for example, if it has seen um, 10 items and 100 steps, then of course that's 0 0.1. And then we square that, and that then becomes the probability of picking up the item. Of course, if an ant is carrying something, it also wants to drop it based on some probability. And this is calculated as follows. So again, we've got this gamma 2, which is some constant, which basically just uh, defines how eager the ant is to drop something. The smaller that value is, the greater the probability, and the larger it is, of course, the more likely the ant is to keep carrying the, the item. And then, of course, we've got this value lambda at the top here and at the bottom. And this is just the number of items of that same type that we've, that we've actually seen. So um, you, you keep track of the last T timestamps, and every time you see an item, you just increment a counter. And of course, uh, the more of these items you see, the higher this value, of course, would be, and the higher the probability that you would drop an item. Now, the lumer fayeda algorithm is, a, is the extension of this basic ant clustering model that actually works pretty well. So, the first thing that we need to define for this uh, ant clustering is to define what's known as a dissimilarity function, or dissimilarity measure, where we take two vectors, y a and y b, and we can calculate how different different they are. If the value is zero, it means that there's no difference. And of course, for any value greater than zero, and this could be, I mean, as much as you like it. So in other words, if it's greater than one or greater than zero, then of course it means that uh, there's some dif dissimilarity between YA and YB. So the value of that you get back is of course how different the two the two vectors are and now the problem is to determine uh, to use this dissimilarity measure uh, to group your items together in such a way that your intra cluster distances are minimized in other words this means that the items that's inside the cluster are as close to one another as possible and the inter cluster distances are maximized in other words the the clusters that are different from one another should be as far away removed from one another as possible so that's basically the problem we're trying to solve okay so the algorithm works by distributing your data in a 2d grid pretty much like we've had with the basic ant colony cluster and again keep in mind that even though we're working with a 2d grid the vectors that you that you that you place on this 2d grid are of course multi-dimensional now your ants move randomly on the grid and they pick up and they drop vectors based on some probability again and they constantly observe an uh, uh, n by n patch. So for example, if your if your patch size is is is, is size five, then it means 
um, we've, we've got five across and we've got five in height and this becomes the patch of course then there's 25 uh, different positions that the, that the ant can um, observe um, to see whether it where it has uh, you know to find other vectors and things and see what, what what's going on okay so next let's assume that ant k is on site i at time t and it finds some data vector y a might be carrying something at that point or not that doesn't really matter the point is it now it sees a, it sees a vector at a specific site and now it needs to calculate what's known as the local density lambda um, y a of that vector in other words it needs to find out in this patch size around this vector is there other vectors that's similar to it or is it pretty unique in this patch and this is calculated as follows so um, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up we're going to have a look at all the vectors in that patch so of course is this a, if this is a five by five patch this is going to be 25 values that we're going to find and we're going to sum them all up and what we're going to do is we're going to use that dissimilarity calculation between uh, y a and y y b y b being all these different ones that you're finding on the patch and of course this value is going to be either zero if they if, if these two are similar or it's going to be some large value let's i don't know some uh, greater than zero value the moment that y a and y b is not is not the same Okay, and then we're going to divide that by some value gamma, which is just a constant to control the number of or number of clusters that we want and how dense the clusters should be. But it's it's a class; it's just a constant that we that we use to scale this dissimilarity with. Then this value we subtract from one, we sum them all up, and then we divide by the number of patches. This is this n squared. Um, or just multiply by one over n squared. It's the same thing. So this gives us the average density, the average dissimilarity between the vectors um, on that side. And then, of course, um, yeah, this is this max function. But I'll explain that now. Let's have a look at a specific example. So let's say the one extreme is we found a scenario where we found y a and all the other sites all the yb's is exactly the same vector then of course this dissimilarity is going to be of course zero for all of them zero divided by some constant doesn't matter it's still going to be zero so this means um, one minus zero gives us one we sum up all of that and if it's let's say a 25 batch size um, then of course this is going to give us 25 so everything is exactly the same 25 divided by 25 is going to give me one and that's the value we return so this is the one extreme case so one means that that's is the maximum possible density of y a on a patch it means that every site contains exactly the same vector um, and of course that's that's the maximum you can have let's have a look at the other extreme let's say y a and y b's um, all the y b's in that site except the vector of course itself on site i and let's say they're all very different then it means that this dissimilarity is going to be some very large value. Um, you can pick something, let's say a thousand, whatever. And thousand divided by some constant is still probably going to be some value. And one minus that is probably going to give us some negative value. And now what happens is we sum up a whole bunch of negative values. We divide that negative value by the patch size. So that's going to give this part, in other words, it's going to give some negative value. And then this max function, the max function, all it does is give me the maximum between zero and this negative number, whatever it is. And of course, that's going to give us zero. So that means if we get back a zero, it means that YA is pretty unique within that patch. And of course, now we've got some kind of measure to say there's lots of YAs around here or there's very few. And based on that, we can decide with the pickup where we should pick up the item or drop one if we're if current, currently carrying something so let's see what we're going to do with that okay so now that we've got this density function we can finally define our picking up and dropping probability so let's say an ant is not carrying anything and it finds this vector y a at a specific site and it now needs to decide is it going to pick this up or not okay so recall that your this lambda um, y a this 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 
this density function is going to give a zero if ya is um, you know very dissimilar if it's a unique item and of course it's going to be one if everything around it is exactly the same now we also define this value uh, this gamma one at the top and the bottom in the numerator and the denominator so let's say that gamma one is uh, 0 0.2 so we've got 0 0.2 in the numerator and at the denominator we've got 0 0.2 plus that uh, dissimilarity and let's say for argument's sake that ya is completely you know it's unique within that environment that means that we're going to get a value that's going to be zero over here so now we've got 0 0.2 over 0 0.2 that gives us a value of one, we square it, it's still one. So the probability of picking that item is a given. It's definitely going to pick up that item. However, let's say YA is very similar to other items in that, in that area. Now we're going to have 0 0.2 over 0 0.2 plus one. Remember one is the maximum density that we can have. So now we've got 0 0.2 over 1.2. And that's going to give us a value that's much less than one. In fact, it's something like 0 0.16, 0 0.1666. And then we square this. And if we square this value, um, the value is even lower. It's something like 0. Point, uh, let me just count. I see. Okay, so 0 0.0278. Okay, so. Now it's not going to. Now the probability of picking that item is going to be extremely low. It's not going to pick that up, of course. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want ants to break up clusters. Okay, so let's have a look at the dropping probability. So now an ant is carrying something. So this vector y a that you see over here, in this case, it refers to the vector that the ant is currently carrying. So we we now define a gamma two, and this gamma two could be something like, again like. Oh, let's just choose let's just choose a value 0 0.3 in this case and now if your dissimilarity between or your density rather of y a the vector that the ant is carrying and everything around it is greater or equal to this 0 0.3 then um, it will definitely drop the item so it's carrying something it exceeded this threshold it definitely drops it However, if the density is less than 0 0.3, so now it means that things are not as, you know, as the items around, around that ant is not as, you know, as similar as the, as the item that the, the vector that the ant is carrying, then um, we simply take the density function, the density value that we get, let's say, for example, that's 0 0.3. Two, one, or whatever the case may be, that's zero, less than 0 0.3. Then we multiply that value by 2. So we're going to get 0 0.41, and that becomes the dropping probability. So in that way, we've got now got the picking up probability. So they pick up items that are not similar to other items around it. And the moment it gets close to other items that's similar to the one that's 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 carrying it, it will then start dropping those items. And that way clusters will start to form and that's your that's your two sets of prob probabilities now in terms of your grid size of course there should be more sides than data vectors because the items can't be stacked on top of one another and of course if there's not enough size then the clusters will start to mingle in between one another it, uh, it uh, you won't be able to discern the various clusters that form um, but of course it can't be too large either because then your clustering is going to take a, uh, quite a bit of time to form and of course that's also not ideal then of course how many ants should you use on your on your environment so they obviously should be fewer ants than data clusters <laughs> otherwise uh, if you've got too many ants they all they're going to all pick up the, the the items and they're all going to carry stuff around and there will be nothing to compare it with because all the ants are carrying all the data the data vectors of course and of course you don't want that but of course if you have too few ants then it will take a very long time to cluster the items but it will still work you will still have clustering um, it's not as grave a mistake as having too many ants but of course you want a sweet spot between having uh, between too much and too little uh, so that your clusters form quickly but uh, that the ants are not carrying all the data vectors around
Now on the patch size, of course, if you have a larger patch size, the ant has more information to make its decision whether it should pick up an item or drop the item that it's carrying. But of course, a large patch size is computationally expensive. And remember, this has to be done for each ant at each location. Um, so that, that you need to take that into consideration. Fortunately, it can be sped up quite a bit with uh, memoization techniques and uh, multi-threading because it lends itself towards that, but it's still going to be an expensive operation. Smaller patch sizes, though it decreases the computational burden quite substantially, um, this will result in less informed ants, and as a result, you'll have very quite a bit of large amount of small clusters forming. Um, and many of these smaller clusters could have been clustered together, um, but because of the small patch sizes, uh, you won't be able to do that. Thanks everyone, that's the most important part of this lecture about the, um, the clustering and clustering techniques. Um, I'll create a video on a, on a small demonstration just to give you an idea how this, how this clustering works. But uh, other than that, that's it for this module. Thanks very much and uh, yes, keep well.